Hello folks and welcome to PGTV News. Here are our top stories. There's a new technology saving lives and it's right here in Polk County. Find out what it is and how it may benefit you. Florida Polytechnic and Draken International are teaming up to train STEM students. Stay tuned to hear how the training is going. Hello and welcome to PGTV News. I'm Stephen Barnes. And I'm Tina Mann. Thank you for tuning in. In Polk County, there is a new app designed to help cardiac arrest victims. Here to tell us more is Mason Chamfless. Approximately 350,000 people in the U.S. suffered cardiac arrest outside of a hospital during 2016. Those who experience cardiac arrest outside of a hospital environment have only about a 12% chance of survival. The chances of survival are doubled or even tripled if the victim receives CPR or cardiopulmonary resuscitation within four minutes of collapse. Polk County now has access to technology that will dramatically improve those odds. It's called Pulse Point. Here to tell us more about the Pulse Point app is Polk County Fire Rescue Public Information Officer Chris John Keir. Thank you for joining me, Chris. Thanks for having me. So what exactly is the Pulse Point app and what does it do? So the Pulse Point app is an app that anyone can download on their mobile device. And what it does is when someone calls 911, the call goes through our 911 system and it alerts them with the app as to where um, the cardiac arrest is happening. And then everyone within a one mile radius that has the app can then respond and help out with that patient. How many incidents of cardiac arrest happen in Polk County alone? So between 2013 and 2017, we've had over 5,500 in Polk County alone, and that's an average of over 1,000. Who has access to the app? Where can they find it, and how much does it cost? So basically anyone has access to the app. They can find it on the iTunes Store or Google Play Store, and they can download it on their mobile device, whether it's a telephone or whether it's an iPad. And um, it's free for everybody. Well, that's pretty cool. You ever, uh, you ever see that show where they're like outsourcing crime where people will like send in tips or whatever and so they can find the crimes a lot. It's kind of like, or maybe not. No. No, 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 but that does sound interesting. <laughs> I'll have to check that uh, out. <laughs> it's a pretty neat concept to use folks who aren't necessarily part of fire rescue to help save lives. That's you may get your cool. chance to be a hero. Hey, got to get my CPR classes first though. That's important. Yep. Well, Polk State College and United Way of Central Florida is working together to keep students in school. The program will connect students to various resources they may need, such as financial and housing assistance, as well as food and transportation. Low-income students, who share an increased risk of dropping out for non-academic reasons, but have demonstrated positive academic progression and an expectation of graduating, will be the students the program will assist. Polk State President Angela Garcia Falconetti said, We understand that life happens and we want to assist students when emergencies interfere with their ability to come to class or focus on their studies. Students who are interested in knowing more about this assistance program are encouraged to call 863-297-1000, extension 3423. That's good. That's an excellent program. I know that back when I was a struggling college student, I was newly married, mm. trying to afford college and everything else, and that yeah. would have really helped me out. Well, and even just like the simplest little little bit sometimes is just what you need to be able to juggle all those different things, you know, family and responsibilities, stuff like that. So. Absolutely. In Lake Wales, a new downtown park recently opened. The park is located right across from the Lake Wales Public Library at 290 Cypress Gardens Lane. At the ribbon cutting ceremony, Mayor Eugene Foltz dedicated the park to Tina Peak, the director of Lake Wales Public Library. Ms. Peak has been a member of the Lake Wales Public Library for 36 years and the library director for 30 years. A plaque honoring Tina Peak was placed at the gazebo. Wow, 36 years. That's great, and she is great. Congratulations, Tina. She yeah, is that's... great. She's a great person to work with. And what an honor. Yes. Mulberry has a new service that residents can use to receive alerts and announcements about what's happening in the city. We talked with the Mulberry City representative, Lewis Holstein, about the benefits of this service. The City of Mulberry's text alert system is super simple. All people have to do is text the word Mulberry to 51660 and they will be alerted of any kind of special events, emergencies, or breaking news that the city has to offer. You know I have to say it, go Big Blue. I'm a Mulberry girl. <laughs> Mulberry fan, and that's pretty cool. 51660, that's pretty simple. 
That is pretty simple. Mulberry. Mulberry. All right. Here's a reminder that the Polk County Roads and Drainage Division is working to improve the Bates Road and U.S. Highway 1792 intersection in Haines City. The project is expected to last 10 weeks and upon completion will widen the south side of Bates Road. Lane closures will be in effect for most of the project duration to safely construct the improvements. Traffic delays at the intersection are expected. Motorists are encouraged to drive with caution, be alert to crews and equipment, and to add extra time to their commutes throughout this area. Well, in Lakeland, if you live or commute near Lakeland Highland Middle School, the Traffic Operations and Parking Services, or TOPS, have enhanced the operational safety of the intersection at Cleveland Heights, where it turns into Scott Lake Road, and Lake Miriam. There were three phases to the intersection safety enhancements. Phase one was timing. This phase involved setting the timing that stops all traffic in every direction when a pedestrian activates any of the pedestrian signals at the intersection. Phase two was a no right turn on red signage. This phase involved the installation of three electronic no right turn on red signs that activate when any pedestrian button is pushed. The signs will illuminate for each of the westbound, southbound, and northbound traffic directions. Phase three was a diagonal crosswalk feature. This phase of the project involved installing a unique diagonal crosswalk feature along with diagonal pedestrian signal heads. This combination of features will provide an additional leg for pedestrians to cross the intersection while the exclusive pedestrian crossing and the no right turn on red signs are concurrently activated. Any pedestrian button will activate both features simultaneously. Now this is, this is something new to our area. We really don't see diagonal crosswalks very often. So folks in that area really be paying attention because um, you know it's, it's easy for somebody to pull up and not pay attention to those no turn on red. Right. But that's gonna be important because people are gonna be coming across the middle of that intersection. Absolutely, and anything safety-wise is important. Mm -hmm. Yep. Here is Benicia Frazier with this week's business tip. This is Benicia Frazier with your quick business tip here to answer all of your business-related questions. Here's a budget-friendly way to solidifying your presence on social media networks while tackling virtually every aspect of your social media marketing from content to advertising. With the proliferation of social media networks, businesses are more likely to invest in these channels, incorporating full-blown strategies to maximizing their opportunity to reach new leads. But not everyone has the time or budget available to devote to content development to ensure they are maximizing every opportunity. So let's focus on social media tools small businesses can utilize that are free and provide for the opportunity to organize a marketing campaign. So let's begin with my personal favorite, Buffer. Buffer is an easier way to manage your social media marketing through the provision of scheduled posts, performance analysis, and the management of all of your most important social media accounts. What I like most about Buffer is that it's extremely user-friendly. You have the ability to manage all of your social media accounts from a single dashboard. Businesses have access to the free account, which provides for the management of three social media profiles and provides 10 scheduled posts per profile. Simple, easy, and free. If you're a fan of Twitter, TweetDeck may be just the tool for you and your business. For all of my Twitter savvy users, you have the ability to transform those same skills into custom marketing exposure for your small business. TweetDeck offers advanced and helpful Twitter functionalities that include custom timelines, Twitter lists, searches, and team accounts, allowing you to enlist additional users and shave hours off your social media management. Most importantly, it's absolutely free. Lastly, if you're like me and you're not the best at graphic design, Canva is for you. With Canva, it is simple to make beautiful designs and documents for more than a thousand layouts and templates. The website is fairly simple to navigate, but the best part is that you have access to thousands of free materials you can utilize for all of your marketing needs. I hope you've enjoyed today's quick business tip. As always, feel free to visit our website at www.polk-county.net and select Community and Small Business Assistance. And don't forget to like us on Facebook. 
Well, we have to take a quick break, but when we return, we will tell you about how Draken International and Florida Polytechnic are teaming up to train students in aviation technology. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He knows he's a pretty big deal. How could you not love him? Welcome back to PGTV News. Draken International is known for its involvement in military technology. They have partnered with Florida Polytechnic to train STEM students who are interested in aviation. We recently had a chance to speak with two Florida Poly interns as well as a representative from Draken. So Draken International is always looking at opportunities to be part of the community. We're also always trying to further ourselves technologically. So our, our relationship with Polytech was easy from that standpoint. They've got a huge facility with a lot of faculty and a lot of students with a varying range of experience. And so I think it was just a match made in heaven. You know, we get to capitalize off what their students bring to the fight and we get to show them how we work in our industry. And together we make ourselves better. We have our aircraft status tracking. It's basically mission capability of our aircraft and we're developing an in-house app that will manage all of that for us. It's taking a job that takes hundreds of people and putting it into one system. So right now we are working on creating a mobile and website along with database the, the whole enchilada of a customized IT solution that's going to help Draken better visualize the aircraft that they have here and their locations all over the country and better um, keep track of their fleet. So whether you're talking the logistics or the app that you mentioned, uh, the app, for example, will help us inform the formulas that will inevitably create our key performance indicators, which will help us measure the health of our fleet, find out where the trouble spots are, and then make it better. From a logistics perspective, the students are going to analyze how we process parts in and out to make our maintenance more effective by having the right part at the right place at the right time to do what we need to do. It's amazing, especially the pilots, because they all have call signs that it's super fun to call them by. But the really exciting part about working at Draken is that they're one of like the top 100 fastest growing private companies right now. So you not only get to work for a good company, you get to work for a great one. Well, that's a pretty, pretty neat little story. It was. It's amazing how many companies are starting to really mm -hmm. partner up with Polytech and, and how much of an asset that's become to yeah. our community. Yeah, I mean, we're already uh, we're already known for our aviation academics. Mm -hmm. We've got the Central Florida Aerospace Academy over there at the Sun and Fun mm -hmm. campus. And of course, people fly in from all over the country for Sun and Fun. Absolutely. Um, you know, we're kind of kind of getting a name. Huh? We are. I Polk think we've, always, we've always had a name for aviation here in Polk County. True. Well, up now is another thing that we have a great name for, and that's sports here in Polk County. Here's Neil Duncan to give us his report. Thanks, Steve and Tina. I want to remind everyone to check the PGTV listings for weekly airings of Sports Central. When you tune in, you'll see a full hour of featured guests, athlete spotlights, and much, much more. You can also tune in the radio version of Sports Central and Talk 96.7 or Talk 1430 WLKF every Tuesday morning from 7 to 8 a.m. and every Thursday from 5 to 6 p.m. Now let's get to your Polk County sports news. Warner University traveled to Georgetown, Kentucky on Saturday to take on Georgetown College. The game was all number seven ranked Georgetown as they beat Warner 49 to nothing. This Saturday, Warner has a bye as they look to get things back on track. Weber International University leveled Kentucky Christian on Saturday 48 to 14. This Saturday, the Warriors will be at Legion Field in Lake Wales taking on the 19th ranked team, Campbellsville University. Kickoff is scheduled for 1.30 p.m. Southeastern University kicked off their 2018 season with a disappointing loss Saturday night at home against the University of the Cumberlands. The Fire scored a late touchdown that with paired with an extra point would have tied the game. Unfortunately, the extra point was missed and Southeastern lost 27-26. As always, go to visitcentralflorida.org or centralfloridasports.com for more information on events going on in Polk County. Back to you guys. Thank you, Neil, for the sports report and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. Remember to tune in again next week for another installment of PGTV News. We'll see you next time.